Week five. In the LCS, plenty of juicy matchups in both NA and EU. Let's look at the EU board first because we got a battle at the top. Vitality taking on G2. That is going to be a massive test for them. That's the must watch game of the week in EU for sure. Uh, you also got a bunch of four and four squads. We're going to see who's a contender, who's a pretender. I think, I feel like I've said that 10 times already <laughs> this split. Uh, Shulka Fanatic, Misfits, they look, woo, they look like a bit of a hot mess going up against G2. And then Splice, are they for real or not? They're taking on Fnatic. Uh, a lot of good matchups there. Definitely some really strong ones to see so this week in EU. And it's again, one thing that we've really been wanting to see are finally some of these matches and these matchups that will tell us who is better than who the other. Because right now with best of ones, it is so hard to get a good read on that. And so finally, we're gonna start to see some of these rematches coming in and some of these teams that now we know, you know where they're kind of slotting in as far as power rankings and things like that. And now seeing the results that come from that. And I think when you're talking about at the very top, Vitality G2 is absolutely a match that I am so excited to see because when you're looking at who's playing, well, it's Vitality, you know, you have Jazuki, Mini True Packs. This has been one of the most explosive teams to watch. An absolute, and then you have characters like Gilius on the rest on the, this team. And it's definitely one that I love to watch and see how far Vitality really can push it. And then on the other side, the kings of Europe. You gotta have G2 if you're gonna, you gotta take down G2 if you wanna be winning Europe. And Vitality definitely has their sights set on that. I like the upstarts into this matchup. I think Vitality will take down G2. Yeah, and the trash talking that's gonna come out of this game is gonna be absolutely fantastic. I mean, Vitality really, they've been tested a few times. That Rock at game was just a, <laughs> I don't know what to call that, but I mean, even the game they lost to Misfits, they were pretty much one stolen Baron away from maybe being able to snowball that game. So, I mean, this team has looked dominant in the majority of their game. So it is a big question mark to see how they do against G2, who have definitely been playing much better the last couple of weeks, looking more like the team we expected them to be. Uh, but I mean, Wonder and Perks are the main two carries here on this squad. and. Many True Packs and Jack Troll might have their way against Hyarnan and Wadid in that bottom lane. I mean, they're playing Ziggs AD carry. Yeah. They're, they're breaking out like all the stops. Bot lane duo. And I want to see, and that's the point, if, you know, if G2 is going to find a way to win this game, it's going to have to be from their bot lane having a better performance than they've had so far. Yes, they did pick up that 2-0 uh, week last, uh, last week, but this is definitely the week that they need to show a stronger performance in picking up these wins. They didn't look all that convincing in the victories that they did pick up this past week. So definitely looking for a more complete uh, effort from G2 if they're going to take down the top dogs in Vitality. Yeah, they were they were down a lot of that game against Schalke. And I mean, that was a great duel between Perks and Nuke Duck in that game. Yeah. Uh, Perks getting the, uh, the old one shot, basically. On Nuke Zoe and Nuke Duck. Through minions, a fun champion. Thanks, Riot. Uh, but yeah, we'll Balanced. see. Balanced this champion balance champion. This is going to be a statement game for G2. Uh, let's let's run through some of these other 4-4 four and four matchups. We talked about Schalke. We've seen moments with this team where you're like, okay, this could definitely be a top contender right. in the EU LCS. And the same to some extent to Fnatic. Uh, I mean, Fnatic has looked, again, much like G2, a lot better the last couple of weeks. Reckless and Hillisang are looking much better. And you know, Hillisang had an interesting interview saying uh, Reckless most talented AD carry he's played with, but also the most difficult to work with in that bottom lane, but they are making strides, so that's interesting. Yeah, that's definitely something that was interesting to hear, but one that you hear that again, that they are making these strides, and it's one of the things that you could see in the performance from Fnatic uh, this past weekend. But when you're bringing up Schalke, I think that they they almost had it, right? They almost had it against G2, just you know, overextending a little bit at certain times, and you know, part of that, I would put the blame actually on actually the meta of the game of how it lets things stall out. Some of these neutral objectives don't quite give off the power buffs that you want to have towards the later part of these games when people are scaled up to end it. You just didn't have that. But I think that against Fnatic, Schalke is definitely going to be up tough because this Fnatic team is starting to really figure things out and perform at the level that everyone would expect from them and have built off of from their performance at, the, at last year's Worlds. Yeah, and you know, talking about uh, teams, 
these late games just stalling forever and ever. On the PBE, they're adding changes to both Baron buff and Elder Dragon. They're buffing both of them late game because these teams just can't close out games. So they gotta give them a buff on Baron and Elder Dragon, which you know is probably fair because the fact that you've seen multiple times teams have a Baron buff and Elder Dragon and a couple inhibs and they can't close out the game is absolutely ludicrous. Right, and you know, this is the game we're talking about now where it's, you know, League of Stopwatches and everybody's getting over shields and over heals all over the place. So it's definitely something that I think will, again, this change to the Baron buffs and Elder Dragon buffs towards the later parts of the game will help end things out. And that is something that Schalke could have used against G2, but that's not the case. They weren't able to get it done and close things out. And I think that they're definitely, again, a team that needs to pick up these wins at this point, heading right into this week at the half point of the season. And they're definitely in tough against Fnatic for that part. Absolutely. Uh, Misfits, a team that has been <laughs> sliding the last couple of weeks. They Wrong got direction. Almost perfect game by Rocket. Again, I'm giving them shout outs for grabbing that Rift Herald. Not quite a perfect game. Uh, they blew a 10K gold lead against Giants, had a rough week four. Even week three, they were looking down on the slide. Uh, this week, they got G2. Uh, that's a good opportunity. Rematch of week one with the, the opening match of the season where they played a hard-fought game against G2. Uh, G2 came away with the win, but this is a chance for Misfits to uh, shut up haters like me and really show that they are a top team in Europe, but I don't think they can do it. Right, I, I, I am a, I'm somebody who thought that we would see a lot more from the Misfits team, but we really haven't seen that so far this split. And that's something that really is not leading into the performances that anyone really would have expected from the talent that is on the Misfits roster. Now, I think when you mention what they're gonna have to bring up and how they're gonna have to perform, you're gonna have to see better performances from someone like Maxler. Maxler had one of the worst weekends in the, in the European LCS last time, and so he's definitely gonna have to step up if Misfits wanna find a way to a victory. Yeah, and also the, uh, the last matchup, Splice, Fnatic, uh, some more four and four, or excuse me, Fnatic's five and three, but Splice is another team that's kind of, ah, they look great at times, and then other games you're like, what is going on here? The main consistent part has been that bottom lane in Kasing and Kabe. Niski has had some rough games. He looks like a bottom tier mid laner at times, but sometimes he looks decent. <laughs> It's, 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 a, it's a tough team to gauge how good they actually are at Splice. Right, and I think when you're watching Splice and what I've seen from them is that they are able to get these kills and pick them up on, on the who they need to, but then they end up overextending and overreaching and then it turns around that, you know, well, you did get the kill on the mid laner, but now your mid laner and your jungler are also dead. So you've given up more than you actually got in the trade. And I think that that's definitely been one of the major problems for Splice. And if they're gonna find ways to get victories, they're gonna have to correct that. Yeah, well, either way, it's, it still takes four or five weeks, but I think this is a week where you're really gonna start seeing separation from that massive, I mean, it's basically Vitality, six teams, <laughs> yeah. and then H2K, Unicorns. Unicorns of so love. I think yeah. We'll start seeing separation here in weeks five and six, and you'll really start seeing who's a legitimate playoff team, who's a legitimate top three threat uh, going forward in the EU. Make sure to like, comment, and subscribe for more esports content.